What's going on guys? This is Dr. Andreoni from Cannabis Doctors of Florida. Firstly, if this is your second or third time on the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about D-limonene. So D-limonene, AKA 4-isopropanol, 1-methylcyclohexene. Bruh. Limonene is a monocyclic monoterpene, which means it contains one ring in its structure. And notice it's a terpene, not a terpenoid, because there's no oxygen molecules. Just like all the other monoterpenes, the molecular formula for limonene is C10H16. And its molecular weight is 136.2 Daltons. Its boiling point is around 352 degrees Fahrenheit. This might be a little different from what we saw with Mercine, where it was like 331, 332. This is because limonene has a ring in its structure, so it's a little bit more stable. Limonene is the second most commonly found terpene in nature behind pinene, and it's easily the top three most common terpenes that we do see in cannabis. It's up there with mercine and beta-caryophyllene. There's a reason for that, and I'll get into it in a second. Besides cannabis, limonene occurs naturally in many other plant species common to citrus fruits, like lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruit, mandarin, and then even non-citrus stuff like rosemary, juniper, and peppermint. Its odor or fragrance has been described as orangey, citrusy, sweet, and tart and it characteristically gives cannabis strains that citrusy, lemony, sweet flavor. And luckily, my other name is Terp King, and you can see I have all the terps here that I can just smell whenever I want. Alrighty then. Interestingly enough, limonene is an optically active compound, which means it exists in two forms called enantiomers. Enantiomers are molecules that are mirror images of each other, but can't be superimposed on one another. So basically, they're a reflection of each other. D-limonene, or the R version, is the one that we see in cannabis. However, the other version, like the L or the S version, that produces a totally different smell, more so found in like the mentha and the pinus species. So kind of like pine and mint. On top of that, limonene is pretty special compared to the other terps because it itself is a precursor to other monoterpenes. In fact, most of the terps that bear the 1P methane skeleton that limonene has, it's right here as well, those terps are also derived from limonene. And if you like minty smelling things, 1,8-cineol is eucalyptus, and I love eucalyptus. In addition, limonene has some unique ecological roles to play as well. I just wanted to bring this up because I thought it was kind of interesting. Yes, it can act to attract or repel insects or pollinators when it's in the headspace or when it's near the flowers. However, when plants exude limonene in the underground structures like in the soil, it actually slows down and even prevents growth of any other plant species around the plant producing that limonene. Yo, that's pretty crazy. But on a different note, I do call limonene the happy term. It's been known to provide uplifting and energizing effects, kind of like a refreshed feeling of happiness. And anecdotal reports suggest that adding limonene to THC enhances that experience to be more cerebral and euphoric. It's definitely mood elevating and stress relieving. And due to its structure, limonene's bioavailability is as high as 70% after pulmonary administration to humans. This means that pretty much once we sniff this stuff in the air around us, we absorb 70% of it. And it was shown to metabolize and accumulate into the fatty tissues of our bodies, like fat cells and neuro tissue, like the brain. And if it can hang out in our tissues, it can certainly affect us to some degree. And just like all the other terps, it easily triggers olfactory memory, which can trigger feelings of nostalgia and things like that. So this kind of leads up to the next segment. What are some of the therapeutic benefits that D-limonene can provide us? It's been shown to be a powerful anxiolytic agent, and it's been shown to be helpful in depression. The anti-anxiety effects are thought to be mediated by the serotonin receptors. Limonene has been shown to increase serotonin in the prefrontal cortex and dopamine in the hippocampus. A study done on hospitalized human depressed patients found that when they were exposed to citrus fragrance in ambient air over time, there was normalization of Hamilton depression scores, there was successful discontinuation of antidepressant medication in 9 out of 12 people, and on accident they found evidence of immune stimulation or a normalization of CD4 to CD8 cells in the blood samples during this time. Limonene does exhibit anti-inflammatory properties as well. The general effect of most terpenes in terms of anti-inflammatory is pretty much reducing the pro-inflammatory cytokine production. It's been shown to decrease the expression of TNF-alpha, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and 10. And basically, when the inflammation decreases, the pain or the nociceptive properties that goes along with the inflammation will also decrease as well. So, limonene is also pain relieving too. What's more, limonene is an agonist at the A2A receptor, which is also involved in pain. Limonene is a great antioxidant because of its ring structure with the double bonds. It's easily able to scavenge and neutralize the other scavengers that are bad for us. There's actually a patent for limonene in the treatment of GERD or gastroesophageal reflux symptoms. It's super antimicrobial, just like all the other terps. And then last but not least, limonene demonstrates some pretty significant chemotherapeutic properties. It's been shown to induce apoptosis in many breast cancer cell lines, in colon cancer, and in brain cancers. 
The way in which it does this is not really understood. Some people are saying it reduced the cyclin D1, which could then lead to cell cycle arrest and decreased proliferation. Others are saying that it inhibits angiogenesis factors as well as some other cell proliferating pathways. Guys, I hope this helped. I know it's a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.